Okay, all our work and our learning of hyperbolic functions has come to this, so I'm gonna straight. I'm gonna go straight to it. Okay. Now it's a classical problem called the catenary. Well, why is a catenary? A catenary is simply a chain, or sometimes called a cable, of linear density, meaning that a linear constant density. So, meaning to say that the density is based on the, the length. Okay, and it's uh, constant throughout the whole chain. And the problem is that if we were to hang the chain, okay, on its two ends, and it would hang under its own weight like so, okay. We want to find the equation that will exactly describe the shape of the chain. Okay, you might think it's easy, and by looking at it, and I'm sure that the mathematicians at the time, if I'm not wrong, Euler is one of them. He might say, "Okay, that's going to be an x squared." All right, let's let's go. Let's do an x squared graph problem solve. Well, it turns out the problem is not that easy, and I mean, I wouldn't be here if it's an x squared graph. Okay, it's not an x squared graph. It's a it's another type of graph, and we need to use a hyperbolic function to solve it. Okay. This is where things get coming coming quite nicely. The catenary, H O problem, and let's show it right now. Okay, now this is how we're gonna do it. So we will define the x y axis over here, and basically the catenary is gonna hang in this coordinate axis. However, we're gonna do one one more step by aligning the coordinate axis such that the lowest point of the catenary of the chain crosses the y axis, which is over here like so. Okay, the lowest point crosses the y axis like that. Okay, it doesn't matter um, how we align the axis, okay? But we want to align it a certain ways to simplify the mathematics so the equation that we get describes the catenary at the axis as given like so. Okay, now you need some physics here, but it doesn't matter. It's simple physics. Okay, so we got an xy point over here, right? Okay, and let's just say that this point is s. Okay, so s is the arc length. Okay, s is the arc length from here, which I will write as zero. Okay, or shall I say zero over here? Because we are not too sure of the y-axis yet. Okay, it doesn't matter. So zero over here, x and y. So we are focusing on this part of the of the chain. Okay, and it's from this part we will really find the equation. Now, how good is our physics? Well, now for any chain, right? Uh, what what any portion of chain that we pick? It has tension forces. Now the tension forces are acting on both sides of the chain. Knowing that it's linear density or linear constant density, there's one tension that goes this way, like here. Okay, in in the tangent, okay, of the in the tangent of the chain, okay, at the tangent because it's going at the tangent over here at the point x and y. There's another tension at the other side, okay, and I will just analyze the tension over here, okay, and knowing that it's at the lowest point and at the minimum point in that case. The chain, the tension will go this one, this way over here, called as tension zero. Okay, so these are the two tension that is acting on the portion of the catenary. On top of that, there's one more force, which is the gravitational force. Okay, which we will label as W O, where W O is the linear density, linear constant density. Well, it's a constant because it's W O. The reason why it's linear is because it's based on the arc length. So it's this times s. Okay, so these are the three forces that's acting on this point of the catenary, and let's analyze that. Now, if your physics is good, okay, what we what physics students normally do, okay, I'm not saying that physics students are bad at mathematics. They they can also be good at mathematics. They they resolve the forces in the x and y, uh, x and y uh, the, the, the coordinates, the x and y axis. Okay, why is that so? Because this part of the chain is in equilibrium, so the these three forces must somehow balance out, right? Well, they do. Okay, so we got t naught. Okay, is equals to t. Cosine theta, okay. T cosine theta over here. That, that means we are resolving this this tension T, okay, into a y co y y direction and into an x direction right here. So T cosine theta is equals to T naught, right? And similarly, T sine theta, okay, is equals to the linear density times by the the arc length. Like so, like this. Okay, so these are the equations that we got simply from resolving the forces over here via a mechanics of physics method. Now we eliminate t. How do we eliminate t? We will take this equation and divide it by. Sorry, we will take this equation and divide it by this equation over here, so that we will get a tangent function. Okay, for convenience sake, lah. I mean, we can have cotangent, but let's just do tangent. So this one would divide here, so we will get W O um, S divided by t. T naught, sorry, T naught over here. Where T naught is the force, like so. Okay. Now simplify the algebra a bit. I'll let A equals to W O and T O. It's always the same. So now we can write tangent theta is equals to A S. Okay. What is A S again? S is the the arc length from zero to x from so this point to x. Tangent theta is the gradient at this point. Gradient is also given by dy dx. So now we will put dy. Dx over here, okay, As, okay. 
Now, last thing that we must do, okay? We will try to eliminate X, the arc length. Because we want to have X and Y, then we can do our simple integration and solve for X and for, solve for Y. However, we got S. Now, you might be tempted to immediately substitute the formula of the arc length inside here, right? Now, what is the formula? The formula is, if I'm not wrong, integrate, um, I think it's square root 1 plus dy dx, dy dx squared, okay? Something like that. Now, if we substitute this one inside here, it's going to be a heck of a lot of mess, okay? So we don't want to do that. You must have seen this one before. ds squared equals to dx squared plus dy squared. Not a problem because basically, we are, if it's small, if we can apply Pythagoras theorem. And I also would like to stress that this formula comes in quite a lot of integration, so it's good to remember that. So we want a ds, but we've got an s over here. Well, that is not a problem because what we will do now is that we will have to differentiate this with respect to x, okay, which I will write over here. We'll differentiate again with respect to x. And now we will have to differentiate s with respect to x, and that is our ds function or our ds quantity. The differential quantity which is very good because now i can immediately substitute this one over here which would be the square root of dx squared plus dy squared divided by dx okay is that correct yep and now re-expressing this equation over here and that my friends is the differential equation of the catenary okay so a lot of mathematics to reach to the differential equation, but the differential equation, we still need to solve it. So let's go about solving it, okay? So I recognize that I have, I'm dealing with the second derivative. So what I can do is that I can solve it using two, success, two successive integrations, right? Now, I would have to introduce an auxiliary variable in order to do that. So let's just say P is equals to dy dx, okay? So re-expressing this, I would get differentiate P with respect to x is equals to a 1 plus p squared it's like that okay 1 plus p squared close bracket i'm just is introducing an auxiliary variable and putting it inside here now i will have to separate the variables now and rearrange it as dp equals to square root of 1 plus p squared okay equals to a and dx right now once i separate the variables p on one side x on one side i can integrate both sides okay integrate both sides and what do we see oh my goodness we see that that is the integration form or the integration result for the chink x function in this case it's just chink p okay so basically we integrate this we will get inverse yeah sorry inverse uh inverse p right yeah inverse p okay and it's equals to x we've got an a so we integrate we've got ax okay and then we've got a plus c we've got x over there right now when x is zero okay which is this point over here then you know we are focusing on this point over here right so when x is zero what can we say about p well we know that p is equal to dy dx right p is equal to dy dx over here so when x is equal to zero the, the, the gradient is equal to zero because the gradient is equal to zero is the minimum point and therefore dy dx is equal to zero and therefore p is equal to zero so if p is equal to zero we get the inverse chain is zero zero and therefore c is equal to zero right so now we can just simply rearrange this and write p is equals to inverse chain ax okay not bad, not bad at all. However, P, we need to now replace the, the initial variable that we use, that P is used to represent is dy dx, okay? It was the inverse, sorry, not inverse, sorry, sorry, my apologies, my apologies. It's inverse P over here, so we bring over the other side, it is chink, okay? So it's, it's, so it's chink x, correct. So now we will just write, replacing P with dy dx, so dy is equals to chink, ax and now i can integrate chink ax dx now i can integrate with respect to the the dy and dx i'll get y is equals to one over a and cosh ax plus arbitrary constant x so okay that is our equation but let's just clean it up a bit so that you know we get things nice uh neat and easy what i'm gonna do is that now i'm gonna shift the catenary again such that okay this minimum point here turns out to be one divided by a okay why why do i want to do that well for this simple reason okay let x equals to zero okay that will give me cosh 
AX is equal to 1, right? Now, cos AX is equal to 1, I'll get a 1 over A over here. However, when I set this as 1 over A, this distance here is 1 over A, the, the X equals to 0 corresponds to a Y distance of 1 over A. Okay, and then plus C, so what I can imply now is that C is equal to 0. I just basically want to eliminate the arbitrary constant, and lastly, I get this equation here. Y is equal to 1 divided by A, cosh AX. And this, my friends, is the equation of the catenary, where the minimum point is at 1 divided by A. Okay, over here like so.